Hey, Indian Creek 8th grade students, it's Professor Blazik, and I'm here with the first video in our World War I series looking at imperialism. Now, the guiding question that I would like you to keep in mind as you watch this video is, why did countries begin to engage in imperialism during this time, and what were the benefits and dangers of this? Now, to begin, it's important to understand the meaning of imperialism, which is defined as expanding a country's power or influence through diplomacy or military force. In other words, imperialism is the want to create an empire, and many powerful countries did this by exercising their control over weaker regions of the world in order to become even more powerful. Now, this would create some of the most powerful nations in history, but would also create a large amount of conflict and even help to start World War I. Now, there were many countries who were involved in the age of imperialism. Some of these countries did so because they needed raw materials that were not available in their own lands, so they would take control of lands that had these materials. Other countries wanted new markets to sell their goods in, and taking over new lands meant that countries would have many new consumers to sell their products to. Other imperialist countries simply wanted to increase the amount of land they controlled or to expand their own government. The more land that a country controlled, the more power they had. So many countries aimed to gain new colonies for their empire. Now, the U.S. was one of the countries that was involved in imperialism as it acquired many new lands in the years after the Civil War. Alaska was purchased from Russia in 1867 for approximately two cents an acre, and the U.S. also gained control of the Pacific Islands of Midway in the same year. Now, the Hawaiian Islands were annexed by the United States in 1898 after the Hawaiian monarchy was overthrown, and the U.S. would also acquire the Pacific territories of Guam, Samoa, Wake, and the Philippines in this era as well. Now, if you look at this map, it shows the new territories that were gained by the United States during this time. And these Pacific islands offered raw materials that were not available in the U.S., and they also greatly expanded the U.S.'s control in the Pacific Ocean. Now, these Pacific islands also acted as a stepping stone for the U.S. to gaining power in China. During the end of the 19th century, China was torn apart by war and had very little industry, but the country offered bountiful natural resources and markets in which to sell goods, so China was a very attractive economic area for imperialist nations. Now, Many other countries had already taken a place in China under what were called spheres of influence. Now, spheres of influence refers to sections of a country or region where a nation had special rights or powers. And during this time, Japan, Germany, Great Britain, France, and Russia all held pieces of China in which they had special control. Now, if you look at this map, you can see the different spheres of influence in China. And it's important to understand that each nation was the only one that had trading rights in their specific sphere of influence. So there was a chance for these countries to make even more money. And this is what the U.S. aimed to take advantage of. Now, the U.S. did not want to miss out on the potential profits in China. So the government proposed what is called the open door policy. And this policy meant that foreign nations in China would be able to trade freely in other countries' spheres of influence. And this would call for far more economic gain for all countries involved. But Japan would actually ignore this policy because it was hoping to gain much more power in Asia and the Pacific. And this refusal by Japan to honor the open door policy would actually lead to war between Japan and Russia, and it would cause tensions with the United States as well, because one of Japan's main goals was to become a major naval power, which really unnerved the United States with all of its new Pacific territories. 
This is just one example of drama caused by competing countries during this age of imperialism. Now, in addition to the other territories that we just talked about, the United States also gained the territories of Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines after winning the Spanish-American War in 1898. Now, the U.S. would also help the nation of Panama gain its independence from Colombia in 1903, and as a thank you, Panama would give the United States a 10-mile-wide strip of land across the country to build a canal. Now, this was a very attractive piece of land to the United States from an economic standpoint. Now, the canal took a very long time to build, but it would open on August 15, 1914. And the canal was so important because it cut 7,000 miles off of the voyage from New York to San Francisco. Now, this would greatly expand American shipping abilities and naval power because it was so much easier to move on the water between the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. So this was a major breakthrough for the United States. Now, if you look at the map, you can see Panama is circled there in red, and the opposite map shows the difference in trip length that the canal made, which it dropped the sailing distance from New York City to San Francisco from 13,000 miles to only 5,200 miles because ships would not have to sail all the way around South America. And this would cut 60% of the mileage off the trip, which again was just a major, major breakthrough during this time. Now, imperialist aims created a lot of conflict between the countries in Europe as well. Traditional powers like Great Britain and France already had large empires, but they wished to expand even more. And on the other hand, countries like Germany, Italy, and Russia would consolidate their own lands and wish to increase their power as well. So all of these nations were looking for new land to control. However, because so much of the world was already colonized at this point, any expansion would likely create competition between countries, which was always a dangerous endeavor. Now, as so many countries were looking to take over new lands, European countries that held colonies wanted to protect them, obviously, because they didn't want to lose any of their lands. And they would do so by strengthening their armed forces. Now, when one nation would increase its military power, this would often make other countries feel threatened and likely lead them to build up their own forces in response. Now, this could create what is known as an arms race because countries would often compete for military supremacy, both for protection and because military power is equated with the overall power of a nation. And this mindset, which was very common during this time, is known as militarism or the belief that a country should maintain a strong military to promote its national interests. And during the early 1900s, Germany, France, Russia, and Great Britain all developed huge armed forces as a result of militarism. And Germany's expansion was especially large, and it left Great Britain and France feeling somewhat anxious. Now, in addition to gaining new lands, countries also began forming alliances during this time. Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy would band together in the Triple Alliance, while Great Britain, France, and Russia joined to form the Triple Entente. You can see both alliances colored in the map on the right. Now, alliances were created in order to keep a balance of power in Europe so that there would be no single dominant country in the region. In other words, by banding together, countries could protect themselves and the world from one nation suddenly taking over a large portion of the world. However, these alliances also meant that an attack on one nation could trigger a war involving many nations because members of the same alliance would agree to fight for and defend each other in times of need. And we will see in the next video that this is exactly what would happen. 
So this was an overview of the world during the age of imperialism and how countries were acting in ways that you will see would eventually lead to an unprecedented global war. We will end again with the guiding question for you to answer, and I will be back soon with the next video in our World War I series. Until then, this has been Professor Blazek, and I will see you next time.